You know, her reply was, well, just put it on my credit card. Wonder where she heard that from. You know, <laughs> instead of having the manners of saying, you know, thank you, ma'am, thank you for the supper, her influence, was, that's the boy's influence, was being influenced by her mother, is, okay, you go in there and just put it on my credit card, just put it on my credit card. You know, another situation, the mother was taking her young son to school one morning, and all of a sudden, they were driving down the road, and the boy looked over to the mama and said, Mama, where's all the idiots at? And the mama looked over at that boy and said, Son, what do you mean, where are all the idiots at? He said, Well, when Dad usually brings me to school in the morning, we see about three or four or five of them every morning. <laughs> the influence that he was showing to his child was flowing into that boy. You know, the same way with us. What is your influence like? What is your influence like when you're living out here in this world? When other people that does not know you sees you, what do they see in you? Do they see God? You know, what is your influence? And how are we using that influence to show other people who God is? You know, whether it's over your kids, your co-worker, your family, or your friends, you have an influence. You do have that influence. The question is, what direction is the influence that you have leading people? You know, what direction is that influence leading people? Y'all the ones, I don't hang around you every week, but you're around yourself every week. And what is the influence? You can think, you can think about this last week that you lived. This last week. What was your influence when you met people at Walmart? When you met people at the department store? When you met people out on the street? getting gay. What was your influence? Did they see a good influence? You know? I like to think about it. Y'all know my past and y'all, a lot of y'all got the same, some of y'all got the same past that I had. When I was an alcoholic and a drug addict, I was under the influence of drugs and alcohol, right? That's what I was. I got a DUI, which I got out of it. Thank the Lord on that, you know? But, hey, I was under the influence of that drug and that alcohol. Well, I'm telling you one thing here. If you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior, you are under the power and the influence of God Almighty. Amen. And that's who you're representing out here in this world. Show who is inside of you what He's like. You've got to show the people out there in this world you know, what you got inside. Do you got it inside? It's something that you don't keep inside. I cannot keep Jesus Christ inside of my heart. I cannot keep Him in there. You know, He died upon that cross for me because of my sin. He gave me eternal life through His Son, Jesus Christ. I cannot keep that to myself. And if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you should not keep it to yourself. Because Jesus says, share my gospel. That's right. Go out into all the world and preach and teach and tell them who I am. Amen. And that's what we're supposed to do. That's our influence. That's our influence as being a Christian walking daily. It's not about just coming to church on Sundays and living our life the way we do on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You know, it's just not about that. It's about living daily every day. Throwing that influence. Some days our influence will be strong. Y'all can see right now, I'm, I'm excited because I preached yesterday and um, y'all that came, we had blessings in the backyard down at my dad's. I'm doing it. The yeah, Holy Spirit got a hold of me and I tell you what, brother Eddie, I'm just letting it rip. And I told you, I'm just letting it rip. Hey, I tell you, the Holy Spirit has been on New Life Church. And he has been working in our church, and y'all know that, and y'all seen it. And he has just been, I mean, I've got up there with no messages at all, had a sermon prepared, never spoke a word out of it. You've probably done that before, brother. A lot of your times, you probably got up there and said, well, this ain't what God's leading me to do, so I'm just going to go ahead and preach what the, what the Holy Spirit is telling me. But what I want to ask you is, what is your influence like? What is your influence like? Do people see Jesus Christ in you? That's the question this morning. That's the question. Sin we got. I've got six little keys I want to hit real quick. First key I like to hit. Make a decision to lead other people in the right direction. That's one thing of having a good influence, is making a decision to lead people in the right direction. 
Now, if you're leading people down in the wrong direction and not showing them who Jesus Christ is, well, that ain't good decision. You know, we've got to make, and that's what it says there in verse um, 13, you are the salt of the earth. We are the ones, that, and the salt of the earth means we are the ones to share the gospel of this earth. Ain't nobody else going to do it but us. we got to tell the people. we got to tell them who Jesus is. we got to show them what Jesus Christ has done for us, you know. When y'all, y'all know this too, a lot of y'all do. You know, one remarkable thing about salt, it preserves things. You know, you throw a little bit of salt on some meat, that meat's going to last a whole lot longer than it would if you wouldn't throw that salt on it. You know, and it's going to be a whole lot. It's going to last a whole long time if you didn't salt it, you know. So if you want to influence others, you've got to make a decision. What kind of influence are you going to be? Are you going to be an influence of you just going to set that meat over there and let it go a couple days and it's going to rot? Or are you going to throw a little bit of salt on that meat and preserve it for a little bit longer? You know, that's what we're supposed to do as Christians. We're supposed to go out here and preserve somebody else's life. Salt puts a little bit of salt on their life. You know, that's kind of the way salvation is. You know, before I didn't have no salt on me. I was, nah, I didn't taste good. You know? And the reason why I didn't taste good is because I was living for the devil. You know, I didn't taste good back then, bro. But I'll tell you what, once I put Jesus Christ and made that, Jesus opened that, uh, took that gap from over here being lost through the cross of Jesus Christ and over here to being saved, well, he threw a little bit of salt on this old boy. You know, I got a little bit of flavor in me now, and the flavor is Jesus Christ. Amen. And that's who it is all about. That's you know, right. that's the flavor I got, right? And uh, you know what? I got to be a good influence. Yep. Not only standing behind this pulpit, and I really got, and I really got to make sure that I am a good influence behind this thing because I got a lot more to answer for than just the average Christian does. Amen. Yep. You know, I do, and I got to be that good influence. But I tell you what. As I say average Christian, I mean you're average, but follower of Jesus Christ. You've got, to, you've got a commitment to You've got to be that good influence. You know, you've got to tell people. And have you ever noticed how easy it is when you're out and about? Now, if I go over to, if I go over to, let's see, who I'm, Wayne. If I go over to Wayne and talk to Wayne, you know, it's going to be easy for me and Wayne to have a good conversation and talk and everything will be nice and cool. But I tell you what, if I would go over to some of these other people, and I'm not just using me because I try to stay away, away from these people, but if you put these other people in your life, the people that you shouldn't be hanging around with is what I'm trying to say. Now, when you get around them people, you know, where's your influence at? Am I, are you talking the same way me and a brother of Christ is talking? Or when I get around these people, do I throw a little dirty joke out there? Or do I cuss a little bit? Because, you know, I ain't got to worry about the influence because, hey, they don't really care. You know, so I can just go ahead and cut up with them and act like I'm one of them to get along to have a good conversation with them. You know, or do I stand up and say, my influence ain't going to change from here to this person. Regardless of whether I'm talking to him or I'm talking to them, and if something right here is being taught that I do not like, I'm going to stand up and say, I am a follower of Jesus Christ, and I will not talk like that, I will not act like that, and I will not do that. That's being a good influence. Amen. That's showing who's inside of you, who's up here in your heart. You know? So let me ask you, think about it. When you're around people, next time you're around somebody, let's see what kind of influence you have. Think about whether you can keep it inside or you can show who is inside to them people. Let me cut that off. Yeah, my fault. Let me cut it off. I don't want to brag that about it. All right, number two. Get close to those you want to influence. Like I say, verse 13, you are the salt of the earth. You know, salt doesn't do any good sitting in that salt shaker. If I just set that salt in that salt shaker and don't put it on my food, it don't do me a bit of good. But Brother Floyd, I know you like your salt, and that salt <laughs> shaker ain't going to sit there. He's going to put that salt down on that all food. I don't care what it is, he's going to put it on it. But just sitting there on the table, that salt doesn't do any good. You know, it's got to get out of that salt shaker and onto your 
food to make it taste better. You know? In the same way, it's difficult to influence people from a distance. We can't just stand to the side and try to influence people from a distance. We got to get involved. We got to get involved in their life. You know, we can't just see somebody out there on the street that we've seen, hey, we ain't seen them since 20 years ago, you know, and just try to reminisce about the old times, things that, you know, in the past, and that's what we usually do when you see somebody. I, I had a guy, um, a friend of mine, went to school with, came in, um, he lives in Hawaii, he's in the military service, I praise God that he has decided to give his career, because he, he, he will be retiring in May. To give his career career to the armed service. You know, let's praise the Lord on that. Right? He's protecting our country for us. You know, but I had him coming in and he got saved about two years ago. And I tell you what, that boy's on fire for the Lord too. You know, he's Man. on fire. He wants to tell people. He wants to be that good employee. You know, but I noticed as we sat around after we talked a little bit, we went back to our which is you know, it's okay. But we went back to our old roots. Started talking a whole lot more about our old roots. Then our new roots. You know, them old roots are dead. They're not growing no more because I'm not going to let them grow in my life. Right. But them new roots, the root of Jesus Christ that's inside of us, you know, that's something that we got to mature and then we got to grow. You know, we accepting, you know, somebody plants a seed and y'all heard that expression, well, let's just plant the seed of Jesus Christ in somebody's life. You know, you've heard that expression, okay? Well, then God grows that root a little bit deeper. The more we pray, the more we get in our Bible, the more we fellowship, the more we are better influenced to people out here on this street, the deeper our root grows and the stronger we believe in Jesus Christ and our faith build and we get strong enough where we can stand up here and we can talk and we can run and, and just tell people about Jesus. Amen. But if we just let that root just from the seed plant it into us and just let it stagnate and stay there and we don't do anything to build that root up and we got to do the point. I preached a couple weeks ago in Philippians that talks about hey, we got a part and God's also got a part. God's got a part in our life, but we also got a part too that we got to do. You know, we just can't step back and say, okay, I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and that's good and dandy, and I'm going to heaven one day. We can't just sit back there and do it. We got to grow. We got to grow and nurture and become closer to Jesus Christ in our life and let God grow that root deep down us so when we do go out those doors and we are around those people, the first instinct will be Jesus Christ. It won't be good. Hey, you remember about 10 years ago when we got drunk down on the coal mine road? And we was, it won't be that. And you fit right along with them. You know, once they bring that up, you go right, well, yeah, I remember that one time. Hey, well, you remember that one. Let me tell you, I remember seven years ago, I gave my life to Jesus Christ. Amen. Two years ago, he took me on a mission trip to Nicaragua, and I was out there sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ. And you know what? God has been in my life, and he's been blessing me. He's put me in a church. And I'm professing Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I'm living my life for him. That's right. Amen. That will Amen. Come out of your mouth when you dig your roots deep. Yep. Dig them deep in the Word of God. And that just right there hits on the third key of this tab. I didn't have it on my paper, but that's the Holy Spirit talk. Because the third key is be a strong Christian. Be a strong Christian. What's it say there at the end of the verse? Yeah, we've re read the first verse there at 13. It says, you are the salt of the earth. But what's the next line say? But what good is salt if it has lost its flavor? What good is salt if it's lost its flavor? Can you make it salty again? Or will it be just thrown down and trampled underfoot? You know? Can you make that salt, salty, salty again? <clears throat> The starting point of influence others is not what you do, but it's what you are. It ain't about what you're doing. And yeah, we're supposed to go out here and do it, but it's about who you are. If you're a child of God, and you've got that down in you, that stuff, that doing stuff, it's going to come out. You see what I'm saying? You don't have to think. And a lot of y'all might be saying, oh my gosh, I'll be scared. And a lot of people like that. I'm getting 
to the chase. A lot of people go, I can't share Jesus Christ with nobody. I'm scared. I'm just a new, like my, my new life church. Well, we're just new believers and I can't share Jesus. Or I can't talk about Jesus. And it's a whole lot easier to just talk about, hey, you remember baseball last season when Trevor hit a home run? I was there. It's easier to get in those conversations which, hey, don't get me wrong, it's good to talk about stuff like that. But what I'm saying is, a lot of us go to that instead of go to what's in here. You know, this ought to be our first priority. Regardless. Yeah, we can talk. We can talk and talk and talk what we want to do. But I tell you what, I want to find out where she stands with the Lord. Because my mission is to save every soul, not me save soul, but for God to save, but me to give that gospel message to every person I come in contact with. Amen. I gotta Amen. tell them about Jesus. I don't want to see nobody go to hell. And that's what it's about. It's about souls. It's not about nothing in this world. It's about individual souls. And when I come up to somebody, I I would love to, and it's reassuring to me as I talk with somebody, as I start to share. Well, you know what happened to me? I accepted Jesus Christ 25 years ago, too. He's my Savior, too. You know, And that's when we give God all the praise and we say, Hallelujah! Praise the Lord! Eddie, I know Eddie. He knew me way back. But now he knows who I am now. We used to be back over here in this section, but now we're over here in this section. You know? It's good. And we can reminisce and talk about the old times just like me and Hal did up there in um, Roses the other day. You know, talk about the old... But I tell you what, I told Hal, Hal, you need to start coming to church. You need to find Jesus Christ in your life. You know, you need to start... You need to... He's alright. He's tough. He just fell down and hit you. That's my grandson. But hey, my main purpose was, yeah, hi, Hal, how you doing? Good to see you, brother. I ain't seen you in a while. Last time I seen you was up here when it was a Mother's Day and I was attending church up here and you came up here because of your mother for church. But hey... And I had to share Jesus Christ out there and put it out there on the line. Or I could have just talked about the old times, about where we used to do and what we used to hang around and good to see and every, you know, how you doing. Have a good day. Shake your hand and say, have a good day. What kind of influence did I show have? Or anybody in your life? What kind of influence? Are you just talking to them just to say hi and be friendly and nice? And that's good. And I like friendly and nice. And this church is friendly and nice. You see what I'm saying? I love coming in here getting all these hugs. And that's why I told him. That's why I went ahead and had that fellowship time. Because I got two hugs out of y'all today. Because it's been a while. I need a couple extra, you know. But, hey, is it just that talking and having a good time and saying hi, how you doing, good to see you. See you later. Or are we being that godly in? That influence that. Regardless, we're going to talk about it, but we're going to share it. We're going to share it. Y'all heard the saying so many times. You might be the only Jesus that that person sees. Yeah. You might be the only Jesus that person ever sees in their life. You. A real relationship with God is the starting point of influencing others. You've got to get your relationship right with God. That's where it all starts. And that's the starting point. If your relationship is not right with God, how can you influence others about God? And that's why I tell my people at my church, you need to get into the Word of God. Because if you don't know what you're talking about, the devil's going to overcome you through that other person and they're just going to knock you down. Because your root is not deep enough. You see what I'm saying? You don't know what you're talking about. I bet you if I pointed out a few of my people from New Life Church and I jumped on them right now and started talking to them, I bet you they would just shrivel down. Because I asked them one time before, hey, let's, hey, let's, let's get up right now. Let's go through this whole neighborhood and tell them about Jesus Christ right now. Let's go. Here we go. Come on. <laughs> Knees thought all you know, well, you know. But it's about digging your root. It's about digging your root deep down in the Word of God. So when you get out there and you tell them about Jesus, it, it's, it's good to just tell them, yeah, I know John 3, 16, that Jesus died on the cross for you and you were a sinner. You know, and that's what it is. It's basic. Salvation is just 
basic. I put a scripture on um, this morning. You know, Jesus made it so easy that just the common man can understand the gospel. Mm -hmm. It don't take no smart person to understand the gospel. You know, but we need to dig in roots a little deeper to know what we know, to say what we need to say when we're out there influencing others. Number four, realize that your life is on display. Yeah. Woo, that's a tough one there now. You think, hey, I'll tell you what, that's a great way to live your life as a, as a follower of Jesus Christ. You realize that your life is on display. Yeah. You know, when I walk into Walmart, realize that, hey, people's watching me. And you put that preacher, pastor, whatever uh, title on your name, they really go put the binoculars out on you because they want to try to find something about Look at him. He's up there standing talking all this stuff behind the pulpit, but look the way he's living his life. You know, same way with y'all though. When you're out there in the world and you see people around you, you know, they are watching. Amen. Believe me, they are watching because y'all know, as a matter of fact, how judgmental everybody is. We are. We all are. We all judgmental. You know, y'all probably sitting here right now, and I'll tell you, here's one thing about me. I, told, I knew I was coming to y'all's church, and I'm coming as I am. And, and y'all see me in blue jeans, and y'all see me in a t-shirt. It's usually when I come up here with a suit and tie, I throw it off anyway, I don't have But I'm coming as I am. And this is who I am. That's right. But it ain't matter what's on that side. That's right. It's Amen. It's in here. Amen. And I tell you what, I got Jesus in here, and I want to share it to everybody that I come in contact with. Amen, brother. Because I don't want to see nobody go to hell. Nobody. That's, right. That's how passionate I am about it. I don't want to see nobody be lost. I want I want people to be with me in fellowship and worship Christ on this earth and do the things and blessings and get together in fellowship, but also I want to see them in heaven. That's right. Because in heaven here, we don't know how long we got. But up there, it's forever. Eternity. We're going to be there forever. Yep. Woo! Lost loved ones, friends, family, whatever. When you die, you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You will be with them forever. Amen. That's assured, Lord. You know it, bottom line. Y'all know it, bottom line. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Amen. Forever, y'all will be with Millie. Yep. Whoa! I want to take everybody I can with me. Let me get a little bit of water. I want to take everybody I can with me to heaven. Because if you take a reality check and look at the difference between heaven and hell, what's a better place to go? Yeah. Where is a better place to go? Because I'm telling you, both places is forever. Yep. Think about it. It's, it's great to think about heaven forever because I'm going to be no pain, no sickness, no sorrow. Praising and worshiping God. He says in John 14 that he's going to build me a mansion. Woo! I ain't got no mansion. I'm trying to work on that piece of junk that I got there at the house now. I've been working on it for the last month. <laughs> you know? But when I get to heaven, I got a mansion up there that God's going to build for me. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And that's easy stuff to think about. And that there gets you excited. Mm -hmm. But you think about over here in hell. That's right. There's pain. There's sickness. There's sorrow. There's agony. Day in, day out, forever and ever and ever in eternity. Always. That's why I want to tell people how to get over here. That's right. And that's our duty. That's our influence to tell people how to get out of this into that. Verse 14 says, You are the light of the world like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. So what does your light do? If I had a flashlight and turned it on, what does it do? It shines light. We are a flashlight out here to this world. We've got to shine the light of Jesus Christ out to them, just like a flashlight does. You know? Like I said earlier, do you realize that your life is on display at all times? All times. If your life is one of a real Christian, you are to glow that light up in the night and you cannot hide it. What good is it to keep that light of Jesus Christ right here? It's good for one person, that's you. 
And if you want to keep it to yourself, that's selfishness. And what's God say about selfishness in the Bible? We've got to take a self out of everything of our life. Mm -hmm. But if that life's just hid right here, it ain't doing nobody good but you. Thank God, and I praise God, that you're going to go to heaven. But what about your family? What about your friends? What about that person you just don't even know? I went to Nicaragua on this trip. I didn't know nobody. Couldn't speak the language. But I wanted to tell them about Jesus. Because one day, I might, if they accept him, I'll see him again. Right. And I'll see him in heaven. I met a boy over there 16 years old. And me and him connected for two years off the internet. Because they had where he, he lived at. They could have internet. And I, I connected with him for like two years. And you know, I talked to that boy. And... When they came up over to me in Nicaragua, he was born a believer, but his friend was And they couldn't reach him. So he came over to me in North America. But you don't call America, you call it. We're North Americans, they're South Americans. They're Americans just like we are. We're just North and South. And they don't they, they think it's, it's disrespectful just to call them, uh, you know, American. I mean, South Americans. They're Americans too, you know. But uh, he came up to me and he said, hey, North American, I've got a friend over here. 16 years old. He's going through bad times. He's drugs. He's, you know, he's just out there where I was at one time in my life. He said, would you pray for him? Would you pray for him? So I gathered up about 10 people that was with us in our group. And we asked if the boy would come over there. And he had about 10 people with him. And we all stood there and held hands in a big circle. And I prayed to I pray with my heart that that boy would see Jesus Christ in me, in his friend, in his family, in his brother, in his sister. Somewhere he would find Jesus Christ through someone so that he would know for sure that if he died, he would go to heaven. That's the influence. That's the influence that we got to show.
say, you know, if they pay, if they pass that me, I believe I believe that they was in heaven. I can't say one hundred percent sure because we can't say that about nobody, you know. But I can only say it about myself. But the point I'm trying to make here is, you know, shining that light. It ain't about shining your light here in the church. It's about when you walk out those doors. It's about when you walk out those doors. You know, we're only here for a couple of hours a week. You know, we're out there in that world. However, how many hours it is of the day, you know, that's where we need to shine that light. So I ask you, where's your influence at? How are you influencing people? This part here ain't very pleasant at times. It says, when you go back into the world with your friends and they are planning something that's not right, do you have strong enough beliefs or guts to stand up for what you believe in? Do you have strong enough guts to stand up and believe what you believe in? I guess the first question to that is, do you know what you believe in? Could I, could I call somebody right now, tell them to stand up and share the gospel, and tell me about Jesus, and show me some scriptures? Show me what the Bible says, not just out of word of mouth, but out of knowledge that's inside of your heart, that you know from this Bible. You know, we all know John 3.16. We can recite it just like that. You know, but that ain't the only scripture. I mean, that's a scripture that'll work. But what I'm saying is, do you know your beliefs? Do you know what you're standing for? <clears throat> And talking on belief system, I'm not talking about religion. I'm not talking about what the Baptists believe, what the Methodists believe, what the Pentecostals believe. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm talking about that's a that's a religion. I'm talking about a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's what we're about at our church. We're not about a religion. We're about having a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Knowing the facts. The facts are the same for everybody when you talk about salvation. But you can't, you can't twix, you can't mix. Hey, there's, there's salvation scriptures in there. It tells you what Jesus Christ did, how he did it, how he rose from it. All that stuff is basic. All the other stuff that people put in, that's religion. But we're about a personal, what is your belief system? The belief system that I'm talking about here is the belief system for everyone. It's through the shed blood of Jesus Christ on this cross that you shall be saved. And that's bottom line. And that's how it is. And number six, and last that I got right here. Make everything that you do be for God's glory. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about for God's glory. And building His kingdom. And that's what we're supposed to do. The end result is not... So that they'll think that you're good. The end result is that they will look at you and say, Wow, look how God has made a difference in your life. You know, that's the end result. It ain't about, and I can stand up here and try to preach and say, Look what God's done for me and look where I've been. Look where I'm at now. God's got me in a church. I'm preaching at work. That's not about me. You know, when somebody sees me on the street, especially like the old people that I see, I don't want to talk about that old stuff no more. I want to say, look what God has done for me. And it's because of God that I am where I'm at today. Right. And when they leave me or they leave you, I would love for that person or whoever I come in contact or you come in contact say, wow, look at the difference God made in their life. Because it's nothing that we can do. So I asked you, how was your influence? What is your influence when you're out there in this world? Is your influence Christ-like? Colossians 3.17 says, And whenever you do or say, do it as a representation of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks through Him to God the Father. The Bible tells us for whatever we do, regardless of what it is, small or big, do it. For God. And that's the way we're supposed to live our life, ain't we, brothers and sisters? We're supposed to do everything that we do for God. Because Ephesians 5 8 says, You was once full of darkness, but now you have the light from the Lord. 
So live as people of the light. Man, what a beautiful verse. You were once in darkness, but now you have the light. So live in this world, shine in that light. Let us stand.
Father, Lord, we just thank you for this day, Lord. And Lord, I just thank you for the opportunity to be in here today, Father, to share your word, Lord God. And Lord, as we go, Father, Lord, I just ask you, Lord, to guide and direct us. And Lord, help us to shine that light out here to this world, Lord. And Lord, help us to be that influence that you want us to be, to be Christ-like, to be more like you and less like us, Father. Lord, we thank you, we praise you for each and every one's here today, Lord. And until we meet again, wherever we meet, Father, Lord, we will lift you up and praise your holy name. And it's in your Son, Jesus Christ, that I can pray this through the shed blood on the cross. And we thank you for that, Lord God, today. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.